So I told you we were gonna talk about rulers. I love rulers. I've got a ton of different ones and these are all curves. Rulers come as complete circles. They come as just arcs. They come as arcs and little clamshells and straights. So you can get rulers that do all kinds of different jobs all in one. You can get really beautiful undulating curves. These are the Lily Lines by Beth Ann Namish. Nemish, I, I can't, I do bad at pronouncing names. This is a really sweet little one from my friend Carol at the Quilting College Cottage. And what I love about this one is that the edges are flamed. So it doesn't cut into your hand when you're working with your rulers. This is a really great one. Um, of course, I also make curved rulers. These are my half circle rulers that um, I use when I do Welsh style quilting. So if you wanna buy, pick up a set of these, you can find these in, on my website, tiacurrysquilts.com. Just throwing that out there. Um, so the ones I like the best, like for everyday quilting are Linda Herka's curves. Now I love these because they come in a huge variety of 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 arcs but what's wonderful about them is that this curve is the same as this curve so if i want to if i have to like work my way around a shape i can use both sides of it and that to me is absolutely essential i don't want to have to buy you know a curve here and then a straight here because you can't use the inside curve so that means I just have to buy two one with the inside one with the outside and that's I don't know I think that's I don't like that I like a ruler that I can use all the sides of so they come in a ton of different sizes like I said and trying to pick the right curve for a piece is obviously important and guys, it's really cold in here today. Um, so I'm wearing this, it's, like, it's almost like a house coat. It's like a smoking jacket, but it's, it's not in case you're wondering why I'm dressed like this. Um, so let's look at how we go about choosing the correct size. I'm gonna move my camera closer um, so you can see, all right? There we go. I think that that should work pretty good. So let's check this out. So this is a 10 inch. And you know what? It would, it's pretty good, but you could see that there's a gap on the sides. So that would be a lot more manipulation of, of the ruler and the machine. Here's a 12 inch. So it's a little bit bigger. Ah, it's still too small. Let's look at the 20 inch. Oh golly, that's too big. That's, this is like a Goldilocks kind of a situation. So I know that my 15 inch works because that's what I've been doing the entire quilt with. So here we go. It fits almost perfect. There is a little bit of scooching we need to do, but that's okay. So let me show you how I work with a ruler. Now, I have a ruler base that is attached to my machine. This is critical for ruler work. The other thing that is absolutely critical for ruler work is that your ruler is a quarter of an inch thick. If you try to use a regular quilting ruler, It'll slide underneath the hopping foot. You'll break needles. You'll break the ruler. You know, you could pop your eye out. Be careful that your ruler that you're using when working with the long arm is a quarter of an inch thick. It has to be a long arm ruler. So I'm going to get all these rulers off my quilt because it's causing a little bit of sagging. And 
I don't want that at all. There we go. So what you do is you're gonna bring your thread up wherever you wanna start, right? We've got our ruler base on here. We've got our long arm ruler. I have my machine set to regulated stitching so it can stop or I can stop and readjust the ruler as I need to. All right, and I know, so I've already stitched in the ditch around the inside of this piece. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to make two echoes around the inside of our, our design. So let's have her go. And as I get to the edge, I'm just turning. I'm trying to get my arm out of the view. Whoops. See, I wasn't even I wasn't holding my foot against the edge of the ruler and it was it's ugly. This is what I'm trying to do for filming. Ugh, I'll have to take those stitches out later. I hate how that looks. Um, in fact, let's just scoot down to this melon, because look at that, we've got room. All right, so you can see that I made an ugly mistake here, and I'm going to now try to do better over here and not get my body in the way. So let's start over. So I've spaced it, or I've stitched in the ditch, and now it's time to make our pretty frame. So you don't need to use superhuman strength as you are manipulating your ruler and your long arm. Problem I came to in the other one. Now we're going to use the inside part of the curve. See, isn't that handy to be able to use both curves? I think so. So I like a quarter of an inch. I like a quarter of an inch echo. This is a little less, but that's because I'm trying to film. So let's scoot in, because you're gonna have to have some sort of travel line so you don't, so you can avoid cutting thread all the time. You just need to pivot the ruler a bit. Let's do this side. And you're going a little bit slower than you normally would. When I'm stitching in the ditch, I go a lot slower. And here we go. So we've got our two echoes. And now we're ready to fill in the inside. And I've been doing a pretty floral design. I think that they're, it's quite lovely. And this is freehand quilting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and knock it out real quick. You're welcome to watch or stop or whatever. Um, but as far as my quilt path goes, I'll fill up this with my little free motion flowers. Then I'll probably travel down here and get into this part of the melon. Cause I wanna work my way across the quilt. Okay, and you'll see, I don't know, can you see that I have some funny pins here? There was a lot of weird fullness in this quilt. Actually, there wasn't, it was really flat, but this is the one funny spot. And this one I need to give it a little bit more attention to. But anyway, so that's ru a curved ruler. And let's just make some pretty designs. I'm gonna readjust the camera so it's just in front of me. I can work around it. All righty. Here.
Here we go. Shells. And for this floral design, you know, I just really try to keep it pretty darn basic. If you try to make it with too much detail, you're going to lose your design in, in all the texture. So kind of make flowers like you did when you were a little kid. Yeah, we know we got petals, there's a little bit of detail inside, and you're good to go. So I see a lot of quilters doing florals right now. Florals are so hot right now. Now this is the way I I like to do them. Let's add another flower here. Let's make long petals on this one. And you'll see that the, the two layers of batting really make the quilting pop up nicely, doesn't it? So I've got a layer of blend on the bottom and a layer of wool on top of the blend. And I really love to use that combination when I'm doing custom quilting because it makes the quilting look so beautiful. Now we're going to echo that little flower, give it a little bit of standoff. Let's throw in some more pebbles. So there's no real you know, method to it. You just fill in with whatever designs you're comfortable with doing. But I think that these look really good with the flowers. And I love this skinny fat swirl. Something about that double line just really looks good to me. All right, we've almost got this. And you could go ahead and grab your ruler to come down on that line, but I didn't, and it worked out. Okay. All right, so there we go. We have echoed with our curved ruler, and we've done a pretty flower inside. Yay! And that's rulers.